Hello, welcome back to my haunted library. It's Regina. So today I have a review for three indie horror books that I read recently. And all three are, are very similar in theme actually, which I didn't realize until I was reading them. So I'm going to start off the bat with Welcome Descent by Cam Wolf. Cam Wolf is a popular YouTuber who was one of the local haunts authors. And this is actually the second book I read of his. He had a book, and I'm, I don't remember the title, I apologize, but I know that he took it down. I think he did a couple of videos about why, but I'm not really sure if I you know, want to paraphrase what he said, but I think that he felt that maybe it wasn't his best work. I have to say, after reading the first book, which I did not think was bad, by the way, I, maybe it's more of his, I think the word is juvenilia, which is like when you're very young and you write a novel or a short story, and then look back on it and think, oh my gosh, uh, you know, I could have done a lot better. Probably not. You were just really young. I've seen so much growth in him as a writer from that effort to this. It was pretty mind boggling. So I did this book as a buddy read with author D.L. Tillery, the lovely Danette, Mistress of Horror. And I'm not sure if she has her review up yet, but I, it was fun to communicate on Instagram with her about, you know, our progress with this book. And I think we, we agreed on a lot of things. So I thought it was interesting that Cam wrote in the beginning of this book, dedicated to my own personal demons. This book felt very personal in, in a good way. So it's about a, a character named Joseph. Oh, and I may also say, since I, I don't even know if Cam, I think he's still in his 20s. It had a very mature point of view, which impressed me. So the book is about a character named Joseph, who is a man who seems to be doing well in life when all of a sudden he gets pulled into this, it's called a storm. It's like a nightmare where he can't get out of it. It actually reminded me a lot of that uh, Stephen King, I don't think I've ever read the book, but the story, um, oh gosh, I can't even remember the name of the, the movie now. It's the one with John Cusack when he's in the hotel room the haunted hotel room. I'll write the title there. It kind of reminded me of that. And I have to say, I really liked the beginning of this book. He, he, he built it up very nice and slow, slow, meaning that you're kind of caught off guard when the first thing happens. And then the second thing happens. And then you're like, okay, I'm not in the, the world. I think I'm in where suddenly his neighbor starts acting really crazy. So this is one of those stories where the character is like pulled into this other dimension and the whole time I'm thinking is he, did he die? And now he's in some kind of purgatory, uh, atoning for his sins. It, it sort of has that theme. Can he get out of it? Is the world gone crazy? Are we in the middle of a, like a zombie apocalypse? Are we in the real world or are we somewhere else? So it, it definitely has that, that quality to it. I think his writing in this was very, very strong. It's beautifully presented. The cover art, the editing is spot on. I didn't see one error for, for an independent book. I'm very, very impressed by it. I felt like Cam put a lot of effort into this and it really shows. So I really enjoyed the story. I felt that the, the way it unfolded and how this character Joseph has to go back and face his demons about his family and the mistakes that he's made, like he's a really bad alcoholic and he, he's He's failed in the, in the father and husband department. We'll just put it that way. So he's facing his demons through the story. And then it does resolve. I won't give the ending away, but it does have a positive ending, which was nice to see because I was wondering how, you know, he was kind of get, kind of getting out of this situation. So I rated this book four out of five stars. I really enjoyed it about three quarters of the way through. I started getting a bit impatient with it. Like, um, you know, it was very episodic about these different things that he was facing. And I was getting a little bit like, all right, let's get on with it. You know, that feeling, but that's really not the fault of the book. I, I think it's really me. I mean, it's not a perfect book, but it is pretty damn good. So I want to congratulate Cam Wolf for this really nice book. And if you haven't read it yet, I highly recommend that you check it out. So I will link that book and the other ones below. Okay. So next one, uh, this is called one for the Road by Jeremy M. Moore. It has a very cool cover. I wanted to thank Jeremy for sending me a complimentary copy of his book. So this, again, it was kind of like Cam's book in a way. It's, it's, it's a lot shorter. It's more of a novella. 
But this is about a character who also gets pulled into a strange world. So this book is about a character named Miguel who wakes up in the desert, I don't know, Southern California or Mexico or something, and he is really suffering from the elements and he finds this uh, like rundown shack and he takes shelter inside the shack. And while it's not just a shack, it suddenly it turns into a saloon. It's a small shack on the outside, but inside it starts to grow and shape shift and all this stuff. And he has conversations with these uh, the bartender and different people in the saloon. Again, like another world, is it purgatory? Is he dead? And now he's like facing up to his sins, working his way through this the strange world. It's all about like this um, day of the dead kind of celebration with music and drinking. And he meets all these different characters and kind of wends his way through this world. So I gave this book also four out of five stars. I really enjoyed it. I thought the writing was tight. I enjoyed the characters. I enjoyed the adventure. Again, I was a little impatient, just even though it's a short book, just because I was like, okay, he he's either going to get out of this world that he's trapped in or discover that he is one of them. It seems like those are the options. So I don't know, I guess I just feel like we've we've seen that plot before. We're not saying this didn't have a, its own spin on that, but it was kind of like reading all three of these books in a row. I was like, wow, these are very similar. All right, so the next book is called Plank Children by Michael Schutz. I hope I'm saying that correctly. And it has a cool cover too. I was sent a free copy by the author. So thank you, if, Michael, if you're watching this. This book was very well written. I mean, it really knocked my socks off in a lot of ways. I loved his prose. I loved his literary illusions, which I think I got most of them, I have to say. I really felt like I got to know his character. So the character's name's Mike. He's about 40-ish. He's a very flawed character. He smokes cigarettes, which I found very interesting. You don't find that too much in, in books that are written nowadays. And he, and I like the fact that he was struggling with a cigarette problem. Like he was trying to quit, but not, not uh, succeeding very well. So the start of the story, his, he's in a pretty bad way. His boyfriend broke up with him and his young nephew named Ian died in a car accident. Like he's a teenager and he's, he's really suffering trying to quit smoking and failing and just feeling really bad. He's really down on himself. So he finds out that the boy isn't really dead. He's at this orphanage that supposedly has been closed for decades called St. Hamelin's. And he travels there and there's a snowstorm and he gets stuck there. And it's not like a place that's in this world. So again, we have a character that's pulled into this other world is, is, is he dead and he's one of the ghosts in this place? And I don't think it would be given too much away to say the Plank children. I knew about this thing, but I'd never heard this word. And then when I found out in the book what, what it meant, it really gave me the creeps. But it's like if you've ever seen those old Victorian photographs where they'll have like the dead child or the dead baby like propped up in the family photo with like this, you know, it's... <laughs> Google it sometime, it's really creepy. So that that type of thing figures in this story. It's kind of like a Lord of the Flies world where he, Mike gets pulled into this these really nasty boys at this school, playing all kinds of horrible pranks on him and, and very dangerous things. And the story is kind of him trying to escape this place and getting uh, thwarted with every effort. So I gave this book four and a half stars. I gave it another half star just because of how incredibly it's written. And I would definitely recommend this book. I recommend all of these books. But again, I got a little impatient with the story about three quarters of the way through because it's like, okay, either he's going to escape or he's going to get discover he's in hell or, you know, trapped in this place. It, it got a little repetitive after a while. And there was one part where I hope I'm not giving too much away, but there was one part where he does manage to get through on the phone to his boyfriend and his ex. And he, instead of, at first he says to him like, oh, please come and get me. And then the ex gives him some attitude and he's like, okay, never mind. Like his pride overtakes his desire to get out of that situation. I don't really think that would happen with the torture that he's going through. I think he would have swallowed his pride in that situation. That's just my opinion. 
And I, I just got a little miffed at that part because I was like, come on, let's get him out of this horrible place. Because he is kind of tortured the whole time, as all three of these characters are in these books. So I am really glad that I did read these because I want to read more indie books and I appreciate the authors who sent them to me. So let me know in the comments below if you've read any of these books. I would love to hear your thoughts about them. So that is all I have for today. Thanks for stopping by my haunted library and I'll see you soon. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.